So, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to open up our today's PhD defense, which will be done very well. I think we will defend the thesis on multi-physics effects in quantum dot structures. And uh, I would like to, to set the stage a little bit, but before I do that, I would like to say welcome to the PhD committee. Our foreman is uh, Paolo Shibani from the Physics, no, the former Physics Institute in Olden, now the Institute for Physics and Chemistry. Uh, then we have uh, Professor Aldo Di Carlo from the University of Rome II. That was <laughs> and then we have uh, Professor Thomas Garm Pedersen from Adolf University. And uh, these three gentlemen, of course, will ask questions to the uh, person who defends the thesis. <laughs> But before they are doing that, um, there will be a possibility to give a talk. And um, of course, that year we give this talk like 45 minutes, I think. Yeah. Afterwards, uh, there is the possibility for the auditorium to ask a few small questions or just to the talk. And then we will have the, uh, the defense part, which will be about one hour, where more critical questions will come from the gentlemen here. And afterwards, the auditorium again has the possibility to ask some more critical questions in, in general. And uh, then, of course, also the supervisors will have the possibility to discuss a bit or give some comments. And then we are hopefully very uh, happy afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> and we will get to That's the idea. That's the idea. And then we have some probably some part. You know, later. Some to do. Some to do. So I think that that's all I want to say now, and I go to Daniela, and we are looking forward to your talk, of course. Thank you very much, Professor Rado, for your kind introduction, and uh, <coughs> thank you to everybody for being here today. So, I will start with an introduction. I will just give a short overview of the quantum dots, and I will talk to you a little bit about their possible application. And then I will mainly focus on uh, two different quantum dots that are structured. I will talk about brutite gallium nitride aluminium nitride quantum dot and I will show you some of the electromechanical models for this structure and their possible implications for the bound structure. And then I will focus on zinc blending in the marcinite gallium marcinite quantum dot. Again I will show some of the some of the electromechanical models for the structure, especially with the focus on an isotropic effect, and I will show you some analysis of their optical properties. Finally, I will give some uh, conclusion and show you how to look at this whole project. Okay, so let's start uh, exactly from the beginning of the story, so the title of uh, this presentation. So the multi-physics analysis of semiconductor quantum dot structures. Well, you can say somehow for the bubble for the title, it seems to be a little complex. So you can ask me why I choose uh, this title and especially why I wanted to use uh, this uh, the cooler world multi-physics in this context. So, so to try to explain uh, the reason of this title, I, I would like to read with you a sentence which according to me is uh, quite helpful to understand the physics of quantum dots. And this is a sentence from this article here, a very nice article, and it reads that semiconductor quantum dots are fascinating physical subjects exhibiting electronic properties close to hydrogen in the electric cage. The merging semiconductor physics with atomic physics. So, I think that uh, merging is the key word in this context. It's already for this census you can understand that the, that, uh, the concept of quantum dose is related to different fields of physics. Already we have this uh, merging of semiconductor physics with atomic physics. But in general, I could say that if we want to develop realistic and reliable model of quantum dose infrastructure, we need to use different fields different theory from, from different fields of the physics. Uh, for example, for the electronic and optical property, we need uh, quantum mechanics. If you want to describe uh, somehow the electromechanical field, we can use the question from classical mechanics. Uh, if you would like to describe, for example, the growth of quantum dots, we could use uh, the statistical mechanics or thermodynamics. So a lot of uh, mostly physics aspects are implied in the physics of the quantum dots. And uh, mostly physics uh, aspects are somehow implied it's an active challenge in order to develop mathematical modeling for the property we are interested in, such as specifically the electromechanical, the electronic, and the optical properties. 
So we can say that in the Hubble group we took up this challenge and so in the following I'm about to present just some of the models and the results they developed during my PhD. Okay, so this is a public defense, so somehow even there are some experts. I would like to almost everybody here has a list of general idea about what we are talking about. So what is a quantum dot? So we can say that by definition, a quantum dot is a, a nanostructure formed by the inclusion of a semiconductor material with a certain band gap within another semiconductor material with a larger band gap. Here you can tell, you can see a nice uh, picture of a quantum dot, this is well, not actually because this is a, a CEM uh, figure. And here you have an idea of the dimension which is about 10 nanometers. And here you have the quantum dot which is the white material and this is the picture here, the semiconductor material of the dot. And around here you have the other material which is called the, the matrix or the barrier in which the quantum dot is embedded. Because of this uh, peculiar structure, we this creates a three-dimensional potential box uh, which is somehow confines the charge carriage, so the electrons and the ore, in a small region of the space with discrete energy level. And this property has led to the quite common and I should say also fascinating definition for artificial atoms which are quite used uh, for these uh, quantum dot structures. So it is in general a quantum dot. And then the second question would be why we are so interested in studying and modeling quantum dots. Well, uh, we are so interested because they seem to be very promising candidates for a lot of uh, application in a new generation of optical electronic device. So even if this is not my field of expertise, I would have to show you just a couple of possible applications. So, one of these uh, it is the quantum dot laser. So basically, this quantum dot laser seems to have a lot of interesting properties. It has the ultra low crystal current density, ultra high temperature stability, and a very high material gain. Here you have a very nice picture. This is the quantum dot laser light given by the gallium nitride, aluminum nitride, quantum dot, and all. And uh, just by changing the shape and the size of the dot, you can have different color of the light in some house. So, this is one of the possible applications. And another one, is uh, very interesting, as it was very important for my project, is the so-called EIT, Electromechanical Induced Transparency, which seems to be a, a very useful technique for slow down of light. The slow down of light has been achieved in some ultra-cold gas material. And when I talk about slow down of light, I talk about something I'm really slow down. I mean, they, they uh, claim about uh, bicycle speed, so it's a lot. And, uh, but you can understand that and it could be used for a lot of pra uh, practical devices. But you can understand that if we want to use this slow down in practical, in practical devices, we, don't, we would like to have this uh, in practical materials, so not at uh, zero temperature. So semiconductor materials seem to be a very good candidate for this kind of application of EAT. Okay, so let's start uh, with the modeling itself. So, as I said, one of the most important aspects in this context is the electromechanical field of the dot, and especially their influence on the optical and electronic properties of the dot. Here you have a, a picture. Now, uh, you don't have to consider this picture as a realistic one of the rules of the dot. This is just a model, a simplification, just to make you understand why we have this mechanical field inside the dot. Here on the left, we have these two structures. This is the, the dark one here is the dot. The, 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 and here we have the matrix and we will, in which we want to embed the dot in. It's like that we will put the dot inside of this hole. Again, this is not uh, realistic, this is just a model. So, but even if uh, this, uh, two these two structures have the same 